It's been um, a hell of an evening of readers. Um, really a remarkable range and all these surprising confluences and um, talking across books almost magically. It's been really great to listen. Um, this, the, one of the nice things about having written a book that really does have a hundred stories about apocalypses in it is that if, you're, um, if a theme is suggested to you, you can usually find an apocalypse to fit it. <laughs> <laughs> so I found two apocalypses. Um, you know, if you write a hundred of them, you take, you take the term more and less literally as you go on. But, um, but I found two apocalypses about treasure. Sesame. Two lovers stood at the door to Aladdin's cave. They'd been at it forever. They believed they were still in love, if only they could think of the right thing to say. They remembered magic words from childhood, but this was an apocalypse, so no such luck. They stood at the door to the cave, admiring a door that fits a cave. One of them thought about man and nature. One of them took her clothes off and struck a pose, shivering. An old lady came hobbling along in a cloak with a basket and offered them a million dollars from it if they'd do it right there in front of her. They did it, and she gave them a million dollars, and they pushed it through the mail slot, but the door still didn't open. They were going to run their fingers through heaps of coins and put golden vessels over their heads like helmets for fun. They wouldn't come out of the cave and they wouldn't let anyone in either, no matter what anyone said or what was shoved through the mail slot. Then another old lady came along in a cloak with a basket. What's in your basket? They asked. The old woman said, bread. And suddenly the lovers were so hungry, they offered to do it right there in front of her if she'd give them the bread. But the woman just rolled her eyes and hobbled off, muttering about the arrogance of young people. <laughs> what I got. I cleared the kitchen island and placed upon it the brown paper bag that contained my three purchases. It had been such a long time since I had a good day shopping, since before the banks collapsed, before the oil spill. In the new era of being careful, I'd been keeping an eye out for, among other things, the perfect bag, a perfect bag for me to be care for carrying things around in, and I finally found it, a glossy black one you can tell might be made from recycled materials, but not obvious in any way that could become dated and with the right amount of pockets so you don't lose things in the bag and you don't lose things in the pockets. I took it, along with my additional items, out of the brown paper grocery-style shopping bag with stiff twine handles they'd placed it in, and I placed it in its silver tissue wrapping on the ice white and recently decrumbed surface, unrolled it like a body from a carpet. I set the new bag aside for a moment, as I am one who eats the tips of pies last. Then I spread the silver tissue. What a satisfying feeling against the outer edges of my hands. Like what I still do and have done all my life with my hands across the surface of the water in my bathtub every chance I get. What a day. Take me away. Across the water, I make the gesture of a conjurer, like I could make something rise. Then I folded the tissue into a square the size of a picnic napkin and put it into a bag of other pretty paper in the closet, in the hallway, for the future. Then I lifted the brown paper bag by its twine, shook it against the air, and pinched it at the folds. The bag made a huge noise in the quiet apartment, in the silent weekday complex. I thought of a mountain crumbling between tectonic plates of history. It was almost six o'clock. Everyone in the universe was caught in rush hour except me. I tried to hold on to the feeling I had when I left work for lunch and did not go back. I repeated the process with my remaining purchases, folding tissue into square, putting tissue into bag, green tissue with a print of tiny crowns in glittery green. Inside, 
a jeweled pillbox, blue tissue slick on one side and natural on the other. Inside, a silk scarf with a pattern of peacock plumes. I carried the jeweled pillbox in the palm of my hand into the bathroom and filled it with an assortment, a couple Sudafed, a couple Advil, a couple Ambien, Xanax, Anaprox, multi daily golden omega fatty acid <laughs> fish oil caplets. You know how colorful and artfully shaped pills are. I returned to the kitchen, my Formica Island, and put the pill box into the new black bag along with my ratty wallet. I smoothed the silk scarf across the island. I wrapped it around my head and tied it at the nape of my neck. I felt exotic. I put the strap of my new bag over my shoulder and put my hand on it where it rested at my hip, like I was ready for action. What a slick, crap apartment thrown up in the boom. What shiny new things. I remembered the fable from childhood with the cock on the cat on the donkey on the road. They were musicians running away from destitute lives to be in a band together. My purchases, one, two, three. My head in a purchase. My purchases in my hand. I glazed at the popcorn, at the popcorn so-called cathedral ceiling above the island and thought of the sky above it, my skull and bones below, my painted feathers a layer in between. I decided to take a spin around the neighborhood. I'd taken this risk ditching work. I wanted to know if I felt empty or fulfilled. I walked like a wandering mind around the neighborhood, feeling out my new things among blocks below highways, whistling my favorite tune, you're toxic, I'm slipping in. <laughs> Until I came upon a vacant lot surrounded by chain link overflowing with thistles. I hardly ever had the chance to walk around the neighborhood, so the last time I had seen it, it had been a desert in there, and now it was completely filled with the hugest possible thistles, just glorious, elbowing each other on the way up, spines shining, purple heads like muppets and dragons, this overflowing of weeds, this life pouring out over the chain link. The history of the lot was a what, the history of the lot was a drug den got torn down after a grassroots victory. But then, because of something to do with property taxes, the lot was sitting there closed. The plants were so impressive. Gazing up, whistling, Brit whistling Brittany, I practically wanted to hug them. Just like I almost ran away with my friends and joined a band at a certain point in my history when anything seemed possible, though the animals in the story just ended up tricking some robbers out of their house, eating their food, and curling up on a rug on their hearth. And now where are the tambourines? What is there exactly for me to put myself into? But let me wrap up, so to speak. Take us the rest of the way around the block, so to speak. This side of the fence with a few words about the value of shiny things floating icily in the constant state of becoming lost to us. Some time ago, I started keeping a log of things and money I wasted. Some effort to contain them. A sweater left on a bench in the city Someone pick it up and use it? A ticket for disrupting sweep street sweepers. I'm sorry. Pie I ate all of that was nowhere even close to delicious. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>